I want to talk to you about how to overcome procrastination. Because if you can overcome procrastination, then you can literally do anything. I mean, think about that. If you have the power to get yourself to take action on the things right when you say you're going to and right when you need to, that can change your life. So let's talk about that right now. And I'm going to share with you in this video the three different types of procrastination, two of which you've probably never even heard of that are affecting you. And if you don't know these three types of procrastination, they're going to rule your life and they're going to dominate and they're going to take over and they're going to hold you back. So we're going to talk about these three different types of procrastination. And I'm going to share with you three distinct, practical, pragmatic, actionable strategies, techniques that you can do right away today to help you overcome each of these three. The first one is classic procrastination. So classic procrastination is the one that we all think of when we hear the term procrastination. And classic procrastination is simply consciously delaying what we know we should be doing. Consciously delaying what we know we should be doing, right? So when we were kids, it was, I know I should study for the test, or I know I should get started on my report, but I'm consciously choosing to wait. As uh, adults, we, we, we have a stack of bills on the kitchen counter or our taxes, right? Like we know we should do our taxes, we know we should do our bills, and we consciously say, oh, I'm just gonna wait until later. That is classic procrastination. And even though that's the one that we all think of, it's actually not the most dangerous type of procrastination because we know when we're doing it, right? In all of those examples and all of those illustrations, anytime that you've thought about procrastination in your life, you've sort of been aware by definition that, oh, I am doing this. And while it is, you know, procrastination is one of the foundations of a mediocre life, it's also not the most dangerous type of the three. So let's talk about how to address this class of procrastination. So I created a, a longer video on just this one by itself, but the short of it is that you need to learn to leverage long-term vision to endure short-term sacrifices. Our discipline becomes dormant in the absence of a dream. So it's not that you don't have enough willpower or it's not that you don't have enough strength or it's not that there's something wrong with you or messed up in your DNA that causes you to be a victim to procrastination. What it usually is, is a lack of vision of how completing this activity gets you to where you want to go. And if you don't have clear vision about how this activity is gonna help you get to where you wanna go, then what instead your brain defaults to going, how can I avoid doing this thing that needs to be done? So. We just need to work through that. And again, I've got a whole nother video that's all about that. By the way, all of this comes from my book. It's called Take the Stairs, which is one of the best selling books uh, in history on this topic of procrastination and self discipline. The second form of procrastination is the one that I want to spend a little bit of time on because you probably have never heard of this. In fact, I invented it. Well, I didn't really invent it, but I, I coined the term. We've worked with over 5,000 coaching clients one-on-one -on -one in our various businesses over the last 20 years, and we've seen this develop in other people, but also in my own life. Because, you know, picture this. When my first book comes out, Take the Stairs, um, it starts selling really well. All of a sudden, I'm on national TV, and I'm supposed to be this, like, expert all of a sudden on how to overcome procrastination. But it's a dilemma because... Here I am, somebody who struggles myself with procrastination. So I invented a new term, which I really love because not only does it more aptly describe what I actually struggle with, and perhaps you will too, but it, it actually sounds really, really smart. Uh, it sounds academic almost. It's, it's very sophisticated. And so I invented this new phrase that I love. I like to call it creative avoidance. <laughs> creative avoidance. And creative avoidance is different from classic procrastination because it's unconscious. When you are engaging in creative avoidance, it is unconsciously creating things for yourself to do so that you can do those things as a way of avoiding doing the things you really need to be doing, but you don't feel like doing. It's an incredibly sophisticated form of self-sabotage. 
because we create trivial things, insignificant things, minutia, menial things, so that we can complete those things and we can feel good, we can feel productive, we can feel like we're getting things done, but in reality, it is a hidden defense mechanism that our brain is using subconsciously to protect us and to, to prevent us from doing the things that we know we really need to do that we don't feel like doing. It's really, really wild how we do this. We're creating stuff for ourselves to do. Now, why do we do that? Again, if you struggle with this, it doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. In fact, it means you have a perfectly healthy, functioning, normal human brain, right? The brain is not designed for success. The brain is designed for survival. And survival is about conserving energy. So the brain left to its own devices will default to doing whatever is easiest and default away from the things that require discipline. But that is what makes you survive. It's not what makes you thrive. If you're going to be a take the stairs ultra performer, if you're going to be one of those people in the top one percenters of your industry, of your profession, in, in your earning power, in your capability, in peak performance, you've got to learn to think differently. You can't be caught up in the escalator mentality world, which is creative avoidance. Now, to help you overcome this, let me help you understand why you do this. This is rooted in psychology, really in neuroscience, if you understand the way that the brain works. The brain loves to complete things. The brain loves to complete things. And anytime you complete something, like you cross it off your to-do list or you delete it out of your inbox, it, your brain releases, there's a chemical response and there is a release of a pleasure, you know, the pleasure feeling drug of dopamine in your body. You feel good. And so what happens is we get addicted to accomplishing the trivial. We're addicted to, to the insignificant because what happens is every single time we complete a small task, we complete it and we feel good in the moment. There is this short-term release of dopamine, which by the way, this explains, leave a comment down below if you've ever done this. How many of you, like just, just say me down in the comments, if you have ever completed something, a task that wasn't on your to-do list and then you added it to your to-do list just so you could cross it off, right? Like if you've ever done that, you've been, a, you've been a victim of this. This is, it's a funny thing that we do, but it's irrational. It doesn't make sense unless you understand the neuroscience of what's going on there. Your brain feels good because you've completed something. The problem with that is that without specific discipline, without intention, without, without understanding the psychology of success and without understanding what's really going on here and what it takes to create a take the stairs mindset, you're gonna default to the, the escalator mentality world. You're gonna default to doing this behavior subconsciously, constantly creating things for yourself to do as a way of avoiding, creatively avoiding the things you really need to do. So what's one tactical strategy? There's lots of things that you could do, but what's one tactical strategy to help you overcome creative avoidance? I'm glad you asked. This is super simple. Work offline. What do I mean by work offline? I mean disconnect from the internet when you are working. When you need to focus, I want you to disconnect from the internet. Why? Because that prevents new emails from coming into your inbox, new text messages popping up on your computer screen, right? New FaceTime phone calls coming in. I would also su suggest silencing your phone as part of this, but it, it also prevents you from, you know, popping online and suddenly you're, you're Google searching something or, you know, you're watching some helpful educational video at one minute and then 10 minutes later, you're, watch you're watching an instructional video about how to join a circus troupe and become a professional juggler, right? <laughs> like, I, I don't know why we do it, but we, we do it. We get, we get consumed. And so simply disconnect from the internet and focus. And if you really want to take it to the next level, I would encourage you to close all of your windows down, like all of the, you know, 75 open spreadsheets that you've got on your, on your desktop, on your computer, and you got your, your inbox and your spreadsheets and your Word documents and your iMessages and like your iTunes, like shut it all down, disconnect from the internet, silence your phone, and have one thing in front of you. That will immediately 
help you be more resistant to creative avoidance. The internet is what establishes the connectivity that allows us to run off in all these different places. And, and keep this in mind, someone who's struggling with creative avoidance, in a word, is struggling with distraction. Distraction. So disconnect from the internet. Now, let's talk about the third type of procrastination, and this one is fascinating. This one's fascinating because it affects the very people who you wouldn't think to be procrastinators. It affects the chronic overachievers, the do-gooders, the taskmasters, the checklisters, the leaders, the executives, the founders, the owners, like the, the premier, the peak performers, the captains, the coaches, the people who you would think would never ever have to deal with procrastination because often these are the people who overcame classic procrastination and overcame creative avoidance to get to their, to their position of leadership but now a new dynamic has emerged, which is that they have lots of responsibility in their purview. Many times there's more people that they're responsible for, more decisions, more projects, more tasks, more budgets, more things that they're overlooking, overseeing, and now what happens is a new type of procrastination enters into their life. Dun, 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 dun. I like to call this priority dilution. Priority dilution. Dilution, And when we first started writing about this in, in the Take the Stairs book, the Wall Street Journal did an article about this and they called it the new procrastination because it affects the people who normally wouldn't have it. Now, it can be conscious or unconscious, just like the first two, but what's different about priority dilution from creative avoidance or classic procrastination is that it has nothing to do with being lazy or apathetic or disengaged. In fact, it's, it's quite the opposite, right? It, it affects the mover and shaker, this person who's a leader. But it is the same net result as classic procrastination and creative avoidance, which is that at the end of the day, when you're done, you leave your office or your desk or you close out your time with your most significant priorities left incomplete. Not because you're lazy, but because you have allowed your attention to shift to less significant, less important, but perhaps more urgent tasks. This person's life is characterized as a constant state of interruption, always falling victim to whatever is latest, whoever's being the loudest, whoever is the squeakiest wheel, people coming into your office, you know, calling your phone, and you're in a complete reaction mode, even though you're very well-intentioned, very capable, competent, successful even, but it's holding you back from becoming an ultra performer, that true 1% and, and that, that take the stairs mindset it takes to achieve your true peak performance. This is shocking, right? For a lot of us, if you don't even know what the three types of procrastination are, you don't have a chance. Like this, these things are driving your biology. They're, they're driving your, your, your brain patterns, your, your ke the chemical releases in your body. They're, they're governing your behavior at a subconscious level. So you first have to just know what they are. Congratulations if you made it this far in the video. You now know what the three types of procrastination are. Um, if you pick up a copy of the Take the Stairs book, we'll walk you through all seven key distinctions of how the most successful people in the world think. But for now, just to come back to the practical tip on how to overcome priority dilution. So if you find that you are struggling with this, I'm gonna give you another actionable hack, a, a tactical tip, something you can do right away immediately. And you're, it, it's gonna be uncomfortable probably, and my guess is you don't do this this way, and it's super simple, but it's very different. I want you to arrange your inbox by priority flag instead of by most recent. So what do I mean by that? The way that most people have their inbox organized is the most recent email comes in at the top. But very often, the most recent email, the newest email, is not the most significant. In fact, often, it's the least significant. It's someone firing off a quick email saying, hey, can you send me this file? Hey, can we meet for coffee? Hey, you know, answer this quick question for me. And it is completely an interruption. It is completely derailing you from the significant work that must be done as a leader. And you will get pulled into creative avoidance because your brain is addicted to completing simple, small things. 
But ultra performers, these people who are the top one percenters, the, the people with the true take the stairs mentality, they understand that success is not about the volume of tasks you complete. Rather, it's about the significance of them. And you have to train your brain to understand and know that it's, it's more about accomplishing a few big tasks than a whole bunch of trivial, meaningless ones. So if you organize your inbox this way, it will change your life. It, because an inbox that is organized in most recent is reflective of how our mind works, right? Like, we live in a constant world of chaos, distraction, interruption. We're in a complete reactionary mode. We never feel like we can get caught up. Why? Because we're allowing this constant, never-ending barrage of interruptions, and then we're responding to it. But we're allowing it, and that's why we feel hopeless, because they never end, and they never will end. But what you can do with your inbox, because your inbox drives the way that you think and it drives the way you spend your time, if that's how you're looking at things, is flag the most important issues, the most important items, the most important emails in your inbox, the things that represent significant projects, significant work, significant decisions that must be made, flag those, and then arrange your inbox so that the highest priority issues are at the top. And then what'll happen is, all the you know, normal fluttering of, of constant trivial communication will be coming in in a given day, but it won't be dis derailing you. You will be able to be focused on the key significant priorities. This is part of how you multiply time, which if you haven't seen my TED Talk, I had a viral TED Talk called How to Multiply Time, which is actually what my second book, um, Procrastinating on Purpose, Five Permissions to Multiply Time, is based upon. So if you want to learn more about the significance calculation, you can check those out. But for now, those are the three types of procrastination. Classic procrastination, creative avoidance, and priority dilution. And until you even know that these three exist, you'll never be able to overcome procrastination. They're ruling your life in a subconscious level. But now you know, knowing is half the battle. And if you put a few of these practices right into play, I promise you'll immediately start overcoming your procrastination.